Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome to Are You Determined? Are You Determined to Grow through Sunday School on the Go? So we are getting it going this morning. Hey, hi, family. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning, Amber, Eva. <laughs> Good morning, Vanessa and Gary. I appreciate you guys showing up for Sunday school. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get it started. I'm going to start us out with a song. Let me turn it up a little bit. This is a good song for what we're going to be talking about today. We are coming out of Lamentations, the third chapter, if you guys want to get there. Lamentations, the third chapter. what we needed to hear so i'm gonna get um 
uh, the evangelist, Mr. Evangelist uh, Gary uh, Montgomery, to pray us in this morning. <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior, we thank you upon this morning. Father God, we thank you for the speaker. We thank you, Father, for her family and her friends. Oh, Father God, I thank you for my wife, loving wife. I thank you, Father God, for sparing our day, giving us one more day, Father God. We still here, and we thank you, and we love you, and we appreciate you, Father. Speak to her like you never spoke before. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for the choir. Amen. In the background. Hallelujah. So today is the fourth. It is the fourth and the 25th and 21. So four is the number of creation. Number 25 is the number of the blessing. And 21 is that stress teaches us the consequences of sin. So what's today's prophecy? God said, wait for the blessing. God will use all aspects of creation to bless us. And blessings are not just monetary or financial, but they are health, strength, wisdom, and love. These are all blessings from the Father above. So today we just have to remind ourselves even though the title says the plea of a nation and we're coming out of lamentations the third chapter then we got to remind ourselves that god continues to bless us every day he wakes us up this morning and just like the williams brothers stated that we're still here and that is a blessing that means we have another opportunity to do what god is calling us to do one more day to get it right with him one more time to get on the right side of what God is trying to do for us today. So I started getting excited. Whoa, help me, let me calm myself down. Let me calm myself down. But today we're talking about the nation's plea. And of course, we're talking about um, the Israel nation in this case. So the title of the lesson is the nation's plea. And so we're looking at First of all, let's talk about what a nation is. Some examples of nations is the US, Israel, Africa, Europe. These are all examples of a nation. But when you think about a nation, what exactly are we saying? So the purpose of being a nation is for community and unity. It's more than just being about a territory. It is considered to be a group of people who share a history, traditions, and culture, and many times language. It is about population, territory, sovereignty, and government. How do you become a nation? First, you have to declare that you're, you can have independence. Then you have to gain recognition. And then, according to the US and other nations, you got to join the a united nation to really consider to be a nation so when we look at the title nation's plea so what is a plea a plea is a request that is made in an urgent manner or emotional sometimes we know about uh, people that have made a plea they're crying out or hollering or screaming for justice in in a lot of cases like we just talked about with george George Floyd thing and all of those others. George is not the only one. There's many that have been utilized by the police and government. So the author of Lamentation has been given to the credit has been given to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is considered to be a weeping prophet. Um, he was born in 655. BC. He died in Egypt. In uh he died in Egypt. His parents, his parent, one of his parents was Hel uh, Helkiah, and he was a priest. Je Jeremiah's name means 
Yahweh will rise or exalt. He was a prophet during the time of King Josiah. And the limitations itself, the book, was written as a uh, like a uh, poem commensuring the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple. It proclaimed, the, he, uh, Jeremiah proclaimed the suffering, the famine, the captivity of, the, of Judah and the defeat by the Babylonian uh, regime. So let's look at the lesson. So Lamentations 3, 22. So I'm going to let you guys read about five verses. Well, it's 11 verses all together. So five verses, uh, five or six verses, starting with Lamentations 3 and 22. Okay, five verses. Okay, mine is the NIV version. Um, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. He sinned, he sitteth alone and keeps silent because he had bore it upon him. He put his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. Hmm. He giveth his cheek to him that smile, that smile at him. What's that? Smite him. Smite him. Mm -hmm. Filled with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he caused grief, Yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. Mm. For he no. does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. That's, a, that's it, isn't it. That's it. That's it. Stop right there. That's all we're reading today. So we see that this message that we're looking at today is the second half of where Jeremiah had written poems to tell them how the uh, how Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. And so he's letting them know that even though God had passed judgment upon us, even when God passes judgment upon us, he still has a hit of mercy and compassion upon the people. And so let's look at the 22nd chapter. Uh, the whole book of Lamentations is actually five funeral poems so it's like what yes in in, Jer in lamentations lamentations means you know uh crying out in grief or expressing grief in some type of way so actually lamentations is kind of like a sad book to a certain extent extent but if you think about when god does things and god causes things to happen. See, he never leaves us in the state where we started out in. Is there a bomb in Gilead? Yes, there is. Does God take us through things or things happen in our lives where we are not so happy about certain things? Yes, that, yes, he does. But God in his infinite wisdom and mercy never takes us to a place where he can't bring us out. And I'm reminded of how anointed oil is made. When you make anointed oil, you do, there are several parts of the anointing oil that you make. First of all, the oil comes from pressing together and crushing different uh, items to go into it. So even the anointing of God, the anointing oil is done by pressing and crushing. Mm. Glory to God. And so there are times in our lives where there's some pressing and some, some crushing that has to go on so that we can walk in the anointing of God. But let's talk about these, these scriptures and 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 let's let's see what see what God has to say about what we're talking about today. 
So let's look at the title of the section of the uh, 22nd through the 33rd verse in Lamentations 3. It says it is the prophet's anguish and hope. So that's what I was talking about. Sometimes God takes us through things, but it's all for our good. He And jo uh, Joseph said it best when he said, you might have meant it for bad. But God meant it for good. So it doesn't matter what man looks at or try, is trying to do. But God always has a plan and always has a purpose for whatever we go through in our life. Okay. I got to calm down again because I start getting excited and we won't even get through the lesson. And y'all be like, she didn't really teach Sunday school today. But we're we going to try our best to get through this lesson because as I'm reminded, of what God is doing, as I'm reminded of the hope that God gives us, it is it, it, it just gives me joy to know that no matter what my pain is, that no matter what my situation is, no matter what my circumstance is, that God is going to get the glory in the midst of it all. So let's look at verse 22. So God's mercy helps keeps us from being totally destroyed. Now, we see that even though the city of Jerusalem and that the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, we know that they, it wasn't totally destroyed. God has always, his intention for the temple has always been and will always be for us to be the temple of God. So that we can experience his glory and we can experience his anointing. Amen. So then in verse 22, he talks about his mercies being new every 23. He talks about his mercies being new every morning. Now, we spoke that verse, but we never really remembered where it comes from. And so to know that his mercy, you know, sometimes when our children act up and, 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 and we don't spank them immediately until they done built up a few things. We're showing them mercy. And then it says in verse 23 that God is faithful. Now, now sometimes when we're going through particular things and, and circumstances in our lives, we kind of question it. You know, when I'm going to use the example of when my mom was uh, dying and, and, and I just, just was like, God, what are you doing? I mean, you know, this is my mom. And and I, I, I don't want her to go nowhere. Can you keep her here? And so even though God is faithful, sometimes we question whether or not whatever circumstance or whatever we're getting ready to go through, uh, we question it. Because we're like, uh, do you not know what's going on here? Because uh, this, this, this ain't how it's supposed to go. At least that's the way we think. But God is faithful. And his mercies are new every morning. And so in verse 24, we see that uh, God uh, tells us that there's particular things of grief that go in a part of our soul, and, but it produces hope that our trials and our tribulations are not for nothing, that God takes every situation or circumstance that we go through in life and he uses it as a testimony to draw them near him. In verse 25, his goodness teaches us patience and prayer. And in verse 26, we see that there is not only salvation, but hope in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. Verse 27, God teaches us that repentance, has, we have to repent because the reason why the temple and Jerusalem was destroyed was because they were worshiping false gods and they were uh, having social injustice, kind of like what we see with the George Floyd situation or uh, Sandra Lee or any of the others that they were doing these things against God's will. And in verse 28, we see that God tells us that sometimes we'll go through some hard things in our lives and he is reminding us that we need to accept some of these things without complaining. Now, now I know it's a difficult thing to understand 
that we sometimes have to go through things with our mouth shut. <laughs> I know for me, I know y'all probably don't have a problem being quiet, but sometimes when God be uh, pushing or pulling or talking or whatever he's doing, and I got to say something, and, and, and he tell me to be, be quiet. Like sometimes when I'm on my job and, and people mistreat me or they're doing different things of that nature and, and then God won't allow me, God says, be quiet. And so we know that sometimes we have to do things and accept things without complaint. In verse 29, we see that God is letting us know there is hope and that we in the midst of accepting his plan for whatever situation a circumstance that we're in that we have the hope of glory that we have God on our side no matter what our situation is and in verse 30 we see that sometimes we have to be punished <laughs> but even in the midst of our punishment everything is clothed in mercy and bathe in God's mercy. If we were to receive the things that God had for us, the things that we are supposed to get without God's mercy, without God's grace, we wouldn't be able to stand it. We wouldn't be able to make it. We could not stand God, his punishment. And if you'll remember when David came to God and he had uh, the situation where his son was dying and he didn't understand what was happening. And he finally, it came that Nathan came and talked to him and told him that, uh, well, <laughs> uh, there was a man, <laughs> there was a man that had a lot of land and a lot of cattle and a lot of things. And then, but he had a neighbor that had one. And so he took the neighbor's only calf and killed it for his guest. And David got a little bit, uh, had a righteous anger. And he was like, well, we, we'll kill him. He, he needs to die if he, he does these type of things. And Nathan told him, you the man. Because you took Bathsheba, the one. And you have many wives and concubines. You the man. And then to cover up your sin, you sent him to battle to die. Mm. You the one. So David said that he found out the reason why Bathsheba's child or his child was dying is because of the sin of the father. And so in the midst of that, we have to remind ourselves. Then David, then he asked him, he said, well, what can I do? How can I rectify this situation? And he said, you got three choices. He said, you can allow God to punish you. Three days. You can allow me to give you to man and let them punish you. And so, and the uh, third choice, I don't forgot what that is at this point, but it, it isn't important. These two, two, two choices right there is a part of the point. And he said, I'd rather God punish me because God would show mercy where man would not. And so God, he realized that God was going to take the child. And during the whole time that he was praying and fasting and not eating and different things, and the child was sick. But when God gave him, when the people came and told him that the child had passed, he got up and ate because there was no more. No other reason, but God still showed him mercy because obviously he ended up allowing him to have another son, which was Solomon. And he was one of the men that was one of the greatest kings ever, although he had flaws, just like everybody else, like all of us. And so in verse uh, 32, we're down to 32 already, that we learn and it's hard for us to remember and accept this part, but we learn things in the midst of grief. Whew. And God said, don't believe the lie that 
there is no way out and that there is no better life. But the life we have with him is filled with compassion. And we notice that even in the New Testament that Jesus had showed compassion. He showed compassion while he was healing the people. He showed compassion when he fed the 5,000 and the 4,000. He showed compassion when he did uh, sermons and taught the people how to live. See, we are so excited about God and the things that he's doing, but he has taught us how to live in the midst of it all. And he did it by showing us compassion. Did he say that life would be perfect and that we would live in a bed of roses by the way roses have formed? No, he didn't. He didn't promise us uh, no problems. He didn't promise us no pain, no situations. But he did promise us compassion and mercy. So let's look at what the definition of mercy is. And then we're done. Mercy the, is the love that responds to human need in an unexpected and an unmerited way. It is the core, at core of mercy is forgiveness. In the Hebrew, mercy means to love or have compassion or disposition of mercy. It also can mean ransom, like as in the mercy seat. Mercy is goodness and kindness and being merciful to your fellow man and being merciful even to strangers. In the Greek, mercy means to have pity on or to show compassion or to be merciful. Mercy is God's patience in action. And mercy is beyond our understanding. So if we are to be children of God and to do God's will, we must show mercy. We must be able to understand what God is doing in our lives and how things uh, don't always line up. And so as we continue to talk about the nation's plea, we know that they were sorrowful and as they began to look at the ruins and began to look at the temple, that they are reminded of their sin and that there are consequences for sin. And so we just have to be thankful and ask God to help us and show us and continue to be faithful in the things that he has given us to do. And so uh, do we have any comments or anything so far? Just think about, I'm just thinking about how, um, especially that last part when you're talking about he bring, though he brings you to the show compassion. When you say, who is he talking about when he said, though he brings grief? Who is he talking about? Who is the he? Yes. He's talking about God. Though God brings grief. In other words, though God allows grief to happen in our lives sometimes. Yes. He still shows compassion and mercy for yeah. us. Yeah. That's the only thing I, I was thinking about when you got to that verse. Yes. In jo or weeping may endure. That's part of that grief. For a night, but joy coming in the morning. And uh, sometimes we're going to have to cry. Sometimes we're going to feel a certain type of way. But if you hold on a little while longer, that too shall pass. Amen. Keep your faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we know that even we see all around us in nature. Like say, for instance, we know that it's darkest according to nature before the dawn. In the midnight hour, it's like one of the blackest parts or blackest times. And it could be a black time in our life. But as we think about that, that's right before sunshine, right before God's mercy, right before 
his beauty comes and breaks forth and breaks through everything. So we know that God is with us and we know that God is faithful. God never sleeps nor slumbers. And God is not surprised about anything that's going on in our lives. Do you think he, he he's caught by surprise? He just looked at us and said, oh my, oh, oh my God, what, 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 what am I going to do about that? I did not expect that to happen. We might think that. <laughs> we might try to figure out plan A, B, C, D, F, and G. But God <laughs> already knew what's going to happen. And he had a plan, a perfect plan for everything that is going to happen in our lives. Any other comments? Amen. No. She's recording. Amen. 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 So we know that the plea for the nation or the plea for whatever our situation is, the plea for uh, us to move forward in things, it's all about God. Yeah. It's not about us. And we know that God's mercy is new every day. Any other comments? No. Evangelist. No, ma'am. No more comments. <laughs> oh. All right. So, question. Y'all, y'all got, we got a few more minutes. Are y'all ready for these questions? Mighty well. So, who wrote the book of Lamentation? From my understanding, I believe Jeremiah wrote it. It's possibility that Jeremiah wrote it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah wrote it. So, what was Jeremiah's type? He was the weeping prophet. He always cried. <laughs> he was. He was always crying. But hey, he had reason to cry. Do you see what they were doing? Yeah, they was showing out. I wouldn't have made it if I was Jeremiah. <laughs> so even though Jeremiah was crying about the grief of his city and his people, what did he offer us? Even today, there's two things he offers us in the lesson we learned today. Three things, technically, but... If you can get two of them, we're good. Salvation. He offers that... salvation. Oh. Uh, what did Jeremiah offer in these uh... What's new every morning? What did he say? His, 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 his grace is new every morning. Uh, yes, grace. He uh, offers his grace. You said you could do two. That's two. That's two. So the other ones are <laughs> mercy. No, she said you can give two, but there was three. Oh. I heard that. Mercy. Okay, mercy. Hope. Okay. And God's faithful. Those are the three I was looking for. But those fit in what y'all said. Oh. Yeah, they fit in there. Salvation, okay. he's faithful. That'll okay. work. Okay. Grace, his mercy. They the same, similar thing. Okay. So, y'all was right. Y'all was on task. Y'all got it. So, we're going to, uh, I'm going to ask for, is there anybody we need to pray for? We have anybody on the prayer list? Um, just, uh, you know, Bobo's immediate family, keep them lifted up. Um, and uh, just keep us on the prayer list. Um, and Amber has asked for prayer yeah. so she can handle her baby. Yeah, um, <laughs> I can't. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's the only things I have right now. Okay. All righty then. All right. Well, thank you for coming, Amber, even though you ain't showing your face. I was in and out. All of us can't sit and be in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> ain't that the truth? All ain't right. that the truth? Ain't I that the truth? Yeah, so, 
uh let me pray us out and then um we can yeah. we'll go ahead and cut it short because we are, we are done that was a really good lesson because i really was trying to figure out how i was gonna bring that thing together because <laughs> i was like oh okay but god know what he's doing and i'm just a vessel so i thank god for being god so let's pray father god in the name of jesus i just thank you for this day thank you for this opportunity to come before you lord god lord we thank you that your mercies are new every morning father god we thank you for your faithfulness father god we thank you for your compassion father god we thank you that the grief is when the grief comes father god that you are there in the midst of it all and you're helping us to to go uh, to continue in, to go forward and not wallow in it and father we're praying over our immediate family cynthia and her extended family of after the death of bubbo so we're asking father god for comfort for healing for unity for all the finances they need father god to come together for that lord god lord god that you would get the glory in their lives father god we're praying father god over amber lord god even for her parenting uh lord god lord god that you would give her patience father god lord god that you would give her wisdom in the name of jesus father god and for my brother-in-law and my sister, Father God, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would continue to unify them, Lord God, in all areas, Father God, in, Lord God, their business adventures, Father God, in their finances, Father God, in all the things that you have them to do, Lord God, as they come together, Lord God, as they become millionaires, Father God, according to your will and purpose for their lives, Lord God. Lord God, heal anything, Lord God, that is hindering them, Lord God, from moving forward, Father God. Shower them with your forgiveness, Lord God. Shower them with your mercy in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we pray for the rest of our family, Father God. We pray for salvation for those that need it, Lord God. We pray for wisdom for those that need it, Father God. We pray for financial stability for everyone in our family, Father God. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So remember to like and share this video. Like and share this video as we come together at Sunday School on the go. That there is no place that you can go. You can always come to Sunday School. May God bless you. And we'll see you next week.